can't imagine. Um, this is perhaps the hardest thing for me to do. I love you, Dexter. Appreciate your leadership, your love. And yesterday, my big baby brother, he's two years older than me, as we announced from the King Center, <laughs> passed away in his sleep. After a three and a half year battle with Prostate cancer. He tried with everything in him to defeat it. Fought to the very last minute. And as I stand here today, I want to thank first and foremost his wife. The love of his life my sister in love. I didn't say law, sister in love. For her perseverance, her love, her sacrifice, her care, her jovial nature through it all. By staying by his side through the entire journey. She's watching as we speak now from California and will be here in a little bit. I love you, Leah. We'll see you soon. I'll give you a hug. Let's spend time, more time together. It's been a journey. My brother Martin III wanted to be here. He was out of the country when we received the news. And we were able to share it with him and his wife, Andrea. And of course, Yolanda Renee was in school. We had to get her out of school before we released it to the public. As you can imagine what that would have been like. And he wanted to be here today, but could not get back in. But I'm standing here with other members of the King family who I deeply appreciate, love, and who we've been through a lot with. Uh, my cousin Angela, Dr. Angela Ferris Watkins, who you know just experienced the loss of her mother, our matriarch, Dr. Christine King Ferris. So here we are again. So thank you so much, Angela. Yep. She's been with me almost from the moment that I got the call. Alveda King, who's A.D. King's, my uncle's, our uncle's uh, daughter will be here shortly. She is en route. I appreciate her. She came yesterday and spent time with me as well. I want to thank Laurel Hill, Reverend Tucson Hill, many of you know, um, pastored, um, West Hunter Street Baptist Church, um, and uh, it was 2020, 2021, 20, 2020, 2020, when we lost him to cancer. And I want to thank her for being here with me. And let's see Alveda's coming now. Um, this is not my usual self, so I apologize, y'all. This is different. It's out the box for me. <laughs> um, Alveda, I just mentioned you. Thank you, Thank you. for your love. And also joining me is Mr. Eric Tidwell, Intellectual Properties Management, the licensing arm of the King Estate. License and permission business will continue. So I want to let the public know um, that although Dexter has transitioned, we continue to carry forth uh, to properly protect, advance, license my father's intellectual property. 
We have major decisions to make, both on the for-profit side and the not-for-profit side, the King Center, because today we stand here officially without a chair of our board. And so in the coming days, we will be electing a new chairman of the board of the trustees of the Martin Luther King Jr. Center for Nonviolent Social Change. Please keep us in your prayers. Um, there's a lot I can say about my brother. Um, growing up, I remember um, spending time in the evening when I was probably about nine, ten, maybe eleven, and both he and Martin wanted me to plait their hair, braid their hair. <laughs> um, back then, they braided their hair because they thought it would help continue to make it grow, and so I remember spending that kind of time with them. I played a lot. I was a tomboy growing up and played ball, basketball with my brothers and um, until I had sense, um, <laughs> I actually played football with them in the front yard. Um, we had a really good time growing up. But Dexter always had this knacking and interest in business. Um, he always was very creative and innovative. And I remember Isaac, our cousin Isaac, Angela's brother, and Dexter for had their first business, K and F Photography. Oh yes, they did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was so ambitious, and my mama used to get calls behind the scene and said, saying, um, "We bought all these these uh, um, pictures from Dexter. And we're still waiting on them, but he was working on them because I used to go downstairs. We had a um, dark room, Sue Ross, in the house, and uh, I would I would go inside of that dark room with him." And eventually, I gained a, a love for photography myself as an amateur. I'm not a pro, um, but just as an amateur. Um, and then he started a DJ business. He used to DJ parties. And I'm trying to follow Dexter again. <laughs> when I was a teenager, um, probably around 18, I started DJing parties myself. Um, and um, a lot of people don't know, Dexter actually worked for the Department of Corrections with the Atlanta Police Department. That was a rough patch because, as you know, coming from the nonviolent family, he had to carry a gun. And y'all were saying, what does that have to do with nonviolence? Well, our family was like nonviolence on steroids. <laughs> um, and so we grew out, up primarily without guns in our home. I remember mother used to always take um, our play guns away from us um, if, she, if she found them. Sometimes we were successful. Um, but um, he served for a stint with the uh, Department of Corrections as, a, as an officer there. Spent some time with, uh, his, what was the name of the, the funeral home that handled daddy's remains? Handley Bales. Handley Bales. Um, funeral home. So all of this was in preparation. And their movies and stuff. He yeah, we, you, they know about the movies. They've been talking about that. He played my father in a movie and um, the Rosa Parks story. Um, and when it came t time to decide who would succeed my mother um, at the King Center, um, we went around the room, we were on a family retreat. And I think I was in law and divinity school at the time at Emory University. Um, Yolanda was, you know, in her acting career. Martin, I believe at the time was uh, on the Fulton County Commission. And so we kind of all looked at Dest and said, it falls on you. <laughs> um, but we knew because of his business sense that he would be the best person. And so he took the helm, um, we know one time, and then resigned, but then in 95, he took the helm of leadership at the King Center in the role that I now 
and then as the CEO. Um, and Dexter was before his time. Even I didn't understand that. Uh, and he had a vision to build something that would bring my father to life through technology. Fast forward today, we understand that. People didn't understand it then. And so he came under vicious attack through the media, self-proclaimed scholars and others who didn't understand because they were focused on, in their mind, they felt his intent was for profit. But Dexter had a prophetic intent. He saw into the future. And had that not been disrupted, we would have had something in this nation that could have been very potent and powerful for where we are today. And so that attack may have slowed things down, but I'm standing here today to say that I'm going to make sure that the vision that Dexter Scott King had will come to pass. Yes. We're going to bring all that to be. Um, through the King Center and the work of the King Center because our world needs it yes. like never before. Yes. And so I thank him. There were times when people thought we were so opposed. Dexter and I always agreed in principle, always. There were a few times, a couple of times, as you know, um, we had struggles from a methodological standpoint, but always in principle. But at the end of the day, none of that destroyed our love and our respect for each other. I always admired his brilliant mind, his, his, his ability to innovate. But I told him this year, I said, Dexter, you to me, you have the most strategic mind that I know. Dexter was a strategist, and most people didn't understand and know that. And so, as I stand here today, on behalf of my brother, Martin Luther King III, the two of us that remain, the next generation, Yolanda Renee King, my entire King family, I want to thank everyone for their love, their prayers, their supports, the many texts and calls that I've received, Martin has received, Angela, um, Alveda, so many of us have received. Um, and know that when I get a moment, I'll text you back. Um, but I wanna, I wanna thank everyone. And this year, I was able to spend some very meaningful and quality time with my brother. Um, and he often told me and I told him, I love you. And he looked in my eyes and said, I'm proud of you and the work that you've been doing. <clears throat> and you take it forward. I know you're going to do a good job. Keep this legacy going. You got this. <laughs> I'm going to miss the, the conversations we had, the laughs, the reminiscing, and the brilliance, and in many ways, the protection. He was a fierce protector. Misunderstood. But he loved his family. And he did an excellent job. And his name and his legacy would live. 1986, when we had that first holiday, he started gathering artists all over the nation 
to put together that video that you saw that song that will live because of his vision, the King Holiday song that he was executive producer for. And what people really don't know and have failed to understand, Dexter used to always tell us and remind us as a family. Our father was a public figure, but he was a private citizen. And when people didn't understand and thought all of his intellectual work belonged to the public, he reminded us that daddy protected his own intellectual property. He copyrighted and went to court over the I Have a Dream speech. And that we're following in his stead to adequately protect it so it doesn't go off the rails, at least as long as we live and breathe in this first generation now. And so, um, <sighs> we will continue and um, I'm trying to remember what I was going to say. Yeah, can't remember. Um, God bless you. Hmm. Yeah, I will. Yeah. So, if it comes back to me, I'll mention it. But I did just want to say. Um, that we will continue to advance this legacy in the spirit of our parents. We have now, we're surrounded by a cloud of witnesses that Dexter has joined. Amen. He's with mom and dad. And I understand from Leah and Yolanda, granddaddy on both sides, big mama and my Nina on the other side, of, on my mother's side, and Uncle AD and Aunt Christine. He's, he's there. And I understand from his wife, when he passed, he had a smile on his face. Praise the Lord. And I think that was my parents said, welcome home, son. Praise the Lord. You fought a good fight. Hallelujah. Dexter kept the faith. His mind was strong to the end. Praise the Lord. And we will be memorializing him um, and let everyone know when. Waiting for Leah to get here. We're following her lead. Um, he was cremated on yesterday. By his wishes. By his wishes. But we are going to celebrate the life and legacy of a giant leader who did so much for this legacy. And I know what I was going to say. Okay. <laughs> so there's a photographer in this city, I won't, it's not Sue, who came up to us, came up to me shortly after we sold the King Papers here in this city. That was Dexter's vision and work. And he said, I just want to thank you and your family because what you all did helped to bring value to black history. Praise God. We've understood, this person didn't say this part, but I'm saying this to y'all, we've understood 
intellectual property on the music and entertainment side. But most didn't understand it on the other side, creatives on the other side. So Dexter really went ahead Pioneer. and pioneered in this area, mm -hmm. opening the door mm -hmm. so that your photography, Sue, has value and not devalued. Mm -hmm. That other people who are doing great works on the civil rights side. I would probably even argue that everything that T.D. Jakes is doing now is because the King family went ahead and fought some battles. Amen. In fact, if you look it up, the right of publicity, which most people don't even understand, that was established by the Georgia Supreme Court that many states followed afterwards, like Tennessee, their right of publicity was established through the work of the King Estate and the King Center. And other people have the benefit of that. So as you are a creative in any form or fashion, just know we fought a good fight. We went out ahead of you to clear the path and the way. So it's not been about us, although people have tried to made it, make it about us in a particular Dexter. Remember, it wasn't about profit. It was about a profit. Dexter King was a prophet yes. who could see well into the future. Yes. And so I thank God for his life and his legacy and I solicit your continued uh, prayers as we uh, transition to a new season. And again, I want to thank each and every one of you for being here. Thank you, media, for being here today with us. And I um, apologize, it's not in my traditional fashion. Doing the best I can. You're doing good. But I love each and every one of you and appreciate you. Um, and if anyone has any questions, I'll do the best I can. But I got my sides here, so they'll, they'll help to protect me. No, I'm just joking. I think they want you to do it with the mic just so that, because we are streaming, actually, so that people can hear. Thank you, Marie. Dr. King, and your brother's... Um, I want to ask you about like the pressure that you and your brothers and sister have had in your life. In his book, he said, yet, all, yet his surviving family continues to be attacked for no reason except none of us, his children, turned out to be him. All of us together are him, the part that's left on this earth. Can you just talk about just, you know, the pressure that you and your brothers had to deal with, and particularly with Dexter, um, when you talked about how the negative publicity he used to get, about what he was trying to do to protect your family's image and name? You know, I'm gonna answer it this way. My mother was attacked too, by the way. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna answer it this way. She used to always say to us, one, people over and over again are gonna try to reassassinate your father. Be strong, just know that in different ways. We see that in very sundry ways today. Um, an effort even right now, I forget his name. Kurt, oh, oh. Trying to level a ca campaign against my you father in the Civil Rights name, Act. C. Um, but it's happening all around in different ways. But what my mother said to us secondly, which was most important, is that you don't have to be me. You don't have to be your father, but be your best self. And I think as these things began to happen, having that in my mind, in the front of Martin's mind, because he talks about best self, has lessened that burden. Doesn't, I mean, it's made it easy, but it has it's made it manageable. So thank you for asking that question. It has been difficult, but I, I know I'm Bernice. I have my own unique gifts and talents in my own place in this legacy. As many people would ask, what is your legacy? I tell them, look, I don't have to discover a legacy. I was born into a legacy. Right. We were born into a legacy. And we each have a, de a defined role to carry forward that legacy. Imagine if all of us just went off in another direction. 
who Dr. King is today in the world, someone that people are still intrigued by, someone who people still look to for guidance and leadership, although he's not physically here, all of that is because of Coretta Scott King and all of our efforts, because we've all had to play a role in that. And we recognize how important that legacy is to the world. And so the, the sacrifice that we saw with my mother, the dignity with which she handled criticism, we took our lead. My mother used to say, I don't dignify every response. In other words, I don't feel the pressure to have to answer everything. And so even as I lead my life and have led my life, I've always kept that in mind. How would mother or would mother respond to that criticism? Is that one worth stopping for? If you remember the letter from the Birmingham jail, Dad said, I received so much of criticism. If I stopped to answer all of that, I would have to stop the good work I'm doing. As a preacher, Nehemiah said, I, I got I to gotta stay on this wall. Why should I come down to meet with you? Because I got to finish this wall. So we all have an assignment to finish the work. And, and so each one of us understand that we're not, I'm not Martin Luther King. I don't want to be Martin Luther King. I'm not Coretta Scott King. I don't want to be Coretta Scott King. We have attributes, as you said, um, and you know we operate in that fashion. And so, thank you, thank you for asking that question, Ernie. Dr. King, Maria Boynton, representing Odyssey, Atlanta, V103, WAOK 92.9, The Game and Star 94. And first and foremost, we offer our utmost sympathies to you and the King family. You have given so much your family has to the world. Um, when it comes to Dexter, how much did he pour of himself into the video that we saw earlier? And also, how do you want us to remember him? You have your childhood memories, you being the tomboy following after Dexter. How do you want us to remember him? So, I mean, he, he poured him, all of, <laughs> I would say all of himself into it. Um, you know, he was a part of pulling the collection of artists together as we saw Whitney and Prince, there was some Curtis Blow. I just saw um, Curtis's um, um, post on IG on the gram, and you know it was just wonderful. And I actually commented on it uh, because of his work in it and so many others. It was kind of like the We Are the World. I got to get from this chair because it's kind of yeah. sliding. It's kind of sliding because of my outfit. Um, so yeah, he put his creativity into it, um, and so. You know, I, I guess I would say, um, obviously, all leaders are, are visionary, but, you know, I, I want people to, 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 to see Dexter as an innovative, creative uh, leader who was very um, fierce and focused on ensuring that the, um, the legacy of my father is, is protected and preserved in the right manner, uh, because that's a lot. I mean, you, you're, you're not just talking about, you know, papers, but you're also talking about, you know, ensuring that people don't just prostitute it. Now, can you do all of that in the wrong way? Uh, can you do all of that? You know, Louis Vuitton has to contend with black markets. People contend with that. But at the major level, right, yeah, right. At the major level, making sure that daddy is represented in a new world. You know, he wanted to bring it all into this new world of technology, you know, and, and, and digitization. And so uh, I'd like people to see him as the one who was the, at the forefront of that um, and kind of waking us up to it, you know. This is where, you know, he used to tell us that the new real estate is uh, in intellectual property. And we were like, what you talking about? He said, the new real estate is intellectual property. He drove that in our head. Um, so, yes, I, as I would see, you know, a cutting edge, innovative, dedicated, determined um, leader uh, and uh, advancer of the legacy in, in this new world of, of technology, even though we haven't seen the manifestation yet. As I said, it is coming. Reverend Dr. Bernice King. Karen, good to see you. So good to see you. I hate the circumstance. Me too. <laughs> um, 
for all that you and your family have done and been through. We thank you for all of your hard work, Eric, King family. Want to talk to you about prostate cancer. As we know, number one killer of black men. Um, and when black men are usually diagnosed, their life's span is a lot shorter than yeah. other people diagnosed. What would you like to say to other black men who are out there who may be diagnosed with breast can or breast cancer, with prostate, prostate cancer, cancer, or have not been tested for it and may have some symptoms? What can Dexter's legacy do to help men today? Well, I, I think what's important um, for our men is don't be afraid to do what you need to do to take care of yourself, your, your health. And Dexter did that. As, as many, some of you know, Dexter was a vegan, has been that way for 30 years, and was pushing all of us in that direction. In fact, my mother ended up becoming a vegan because of that. Um, and we are much more holistic in our approach to health and wellness. Um, so, you know, the first thing is to my black, black brothers, you know, we, you, you're a treasure. Um, and we want you to, to take care of yourself. It's, it's not m macho to not do that, you know. Um, the, the alpha energy requires that you do that. Um, and so that would be the, 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 the first thing that I would say. And then I would say to the women that are by their side, whether it's uh, a wife, a girlfriend, a, a mate, um, a, a daughter, you know, a sister, you know, let's, let's push our brothers gently. Maybe have to go and take them and say, hey, at this age you need to do this. At this age you need to do this. At this age you need to do this. But more importantly, with all of these things, as you know, in the black community overall, we've got to do a better job of disseminating and educating um, with all of these different health challenges. We, we've obviously done a much better job with breast cancer. Um, but these cancers, are, they're ferocious. What they do to you is just, you know, unforgivable almost. Um, but I think we can get past it. But, you know, it, it, not to dwell on it because we're all going to go somewhere. You still have to take care of yourself, you know. Dexter took care of himself. Let me just say that. There was nothing that he did that, that created this that I believe. God, mysterious, the universe moves in mysterious ways. There's some things that get out of our control, uh, but the things that are in our control is what I'm talking about. Don't ignore that. Um, do your part. But the beauty of it is what I said in the beginning. He fought it for three and a half years, and that's what's important, you know. Uh, that he was able to fight, and I think he, he almost conquered it one time, and it, you know it returned. So, I don't question God. I don't question the process. I don't think there was anything that he necessarily did wrong, um, in terms of you know his health and wellness. But I will say that it's important that my, my brothers really take care of themselves and and start going to the doctors in your twenties, thirties, forties. Don't wait till you something's wrong. Hello, I'm Valencia Jones with Channel 69. That's Atlanta 69 WUPA yeah. TV. And my question is, if Dexter was here today, what would he have to say to his family and to everyone? <laughs> You're asking me a question that's pretty deep. Um, mm. Ooh, I'm gonna need help with that. <laughs> so Dexter, good, good morning everyone. <clears throat> is it still morning or is it afternoon yet? <laughs> still morning, good morning. Uh, Dexter was a true intellectual, and he had a lot to say. Uh, we would laugh. In fact, one of Dexter's nicknames was 
count uh, as in Count Dracula because Dexter would be very reflective during the first part of the day. And then as the and just like a the, the first, first and second part of the day when down. the sun started going down. Make it plain though, that means from 12 to 5, he was still up, <laughs> reflecting. <laughs> He would, um, in the evening, like a lot of creatives do, um, he would really um, have a lot to say in the evenings. So when we would say to Dexter, we need to have a conversation, um, can we do it at 11 a.m.? Can we do it at 1 p.m.? Dexter would say, <laughs> I've got some other things to do. Can we do it at about 8 o'clock, 8 p.m., 9 p.m.? And we would say, okay. But then Dexter would go on and on, and everything he said was brilliant. Everything he said was really brilliant. He had such a creative mind. He was such an intellectual. He was well-read, yeah. well-studied, well-versed. And so what he would say to us now is, you all have got to keep going. I've done my work. You all have got to keep going. That's what he would say. Yeah. Dexter, Yolanda, and I, are the more visible creators in the family, music, dance, theater, and all of that. If you see Dexter's work, my own children were in the video. And he would mm -hmm. tell all of us, we were in the video and we would do it. Now, Bernice can honestly sing and rap and dance, too. And she was a DJ, but you want to remember her as the Reverend Dr. <laughs> Bernice King. But she has some of, the, some of the most, she insists, we have to have fun. And Dexter believed that, too. So he was not only intellectual, and he was a creative, and the whole family. And he, he would tell you to do what we do. He'd say, love each other. Love each other. Yeah, right? OK. I hope that works. What she said is the key, because he kept saying to me, keep it going. Let's keep moving forward, because he understood like we understand. There's a lot that we still have to do. And more importantly, we got to get Dr. King to the world. And it's only going to be through the technological route, because that's where we are today. Thank you. Dr. King, Julian Virgin, WAB News Atlanta's NPR affiliate. A couple weeks ago, we spoke, and we uh, just asked you personally, how you holding up with your sister, your mother, and now your brother transitioning. How does this make you change your perspective on life? <laughs> um, wow. It makes me more focused. I was already focused, but even more focused. Because I'm not 50, I'm about, I'm about to be 61. And there's a lot that I believe that I've been called to do to carry some other things forward in this legacy. And so right now I'm very reflective and trying to pull it all together in my head and praying a whole lot um, for guidance and direction. But the time, it's an urgency. So that's the way it makes me feel very urgent. When my mom and when my sister suddenly died 16 months after my mother, I started making shifts then. And now that, you know, Dexter is gone, I'm having to recalibrate. Um, so I'm still in process because this is so fresh. Yes, ma'am. Lastly, you talked about growing up playing football, basketball with your brothers. Is there a certain phrase, a saying, a mannerism that you'll stick with as, you know, we continue to move forward? From Dexter, that is. <laughs> but Nita Hampton Smith, this wasn't as a child. But when he was CEO of the King Center, Dexter would say, trust but verify. That's to everybody. That's for accountability. 
We give assignments out. We expect they're going to be done, but verify. I can't forget that. Eric, is it? Verify that it's done right. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. King, Deidre Dukes, Fox 5 Atlanta. First off, let me offer my sincere condolences to you and the other members of the King and King Ferris family. My question to you involves legacy. For so many decades, first your mother, your aunt, then you and your siblings have ensured that the legacy of Dr. King lives on, not only here in Atlanta, but around the world. Of course, during times like this, you do reflect on legacy and look ahead to the future. And I would like to ask you, as it pertains to your niece, the younger cousins, uh, what work is underway, either um, in front of the cameras, behind the scenes, to ensure that as you all patch the torch, that we can ensure that the legacy lives on for generations to come? Well, I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. I mean, everything's not, you know, as you know, it's not public. Um, you know, we, we are talking to, yeah. <laughs> conversing with um, nieces the and, the, and the children. The kids. Yeah, but she's talking specifically about, about the family. Oh, okay. With your kids, oh, okay. grandkids. She has the largest, um, what do you call it? The largest, the largest branch, six kids, 11 blood, grandkids. Her, her yeah, blood is the largest. Oh, here's the next generation here. Can ask you that. answer Come the on. question? That would be great. She, it would be great for her to answer because this is, this is Ferris. Uh, who's in that generation with Yolanda. So can you come now? I mentioned you mentioned earlier. Did I mention that she was coming earlier? Ferris is, uh, Ferris is um, let me pull it back a little bit here, is uh, Angela's uh, daughter. They didn't make all this room for me. Hello, everyone. Um, as you all know, this is not like the, the easiest time uh, for us. Um, but one thing that we do know, I remember um, watching videos when uh, these tragedies started happening to our family. And it was asked of them many of the questions that you all are asking now. How do you all go through this? How do you stand? And I remember watching a video of my great-grandfather, and he was saying, um, yeah, it's hard. Uh, this is not something that anybody wishes on anything. But if God saw fit to give us this plight, then he also saw fit to take us, take us through that. And so as for us in this next generation, we are learning the, re the literal resilience that they learned, um, which will sustain us in the years to come. And so I, I, I don't necessarily want to answer the specific question about what literal work are you doing, but more so I want to let you know that the training has to be done before that work can even begin because this is a heavy plight. This is a heavy task. This is a heavy journey to go through if you're not prepared for it. My grandmother did an amazing job alongside my Aunt Coretta. Um, when it looked like there was nothing, they picked up and had something. And that is what everybody behind me and the people that you don't see in my family, that is what they have continued to do. And we will continue to do that as well. I know you all see Yolanda Renee and she's doing an amazing job, but understand that she needs guidance, she needs protection. She has to go through the training as well because her mantle is heavy. Her plight is long, and she has to be equipped. We all have to be equipped. So if there's every, anything that we can ask of you is just for your prayers, for your love, um, for your respect, for your attention, um, and be patient with us, please. <laughs> if I can ask. Uh, and let me just add to that, too. I think it was two, three years ago where Angela, in fact, said, let's get all the girls together. You remember that? So that was part of our process. So we're Cutie, doing Cutie things <laughs> like that um, and spending time uh, with our um, next generation because there are several of them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, if I can ask one more question about organization. You mentioned that um, you're going to be electing a new chairman of the King Center's Board of Trustees. Uh, what's the timetable on that? And where are you all going in terms of the King Estate in terms of a succession with that? Wait a minute, Bernice. Uh, I think Bernice didn't want me to go far enough to say, but the King Center is so well equipped with training, with programs, and has stepped into digitally. They do digitally, and we do, because Angela and I are on the board as well, reaching 
into millions with training. And the training will continue. And so this is not an ad for the King Center today. But please visit, if you don't know how to be nonviolent, how to stop riots, how to step in with love and sanity, Please, that is what Bernice, Dexter, Martin, Yolanda, did Aunt Coretta, Daddy, Aunt Christine, just on and on. That is who we are. She's, she's asking me not to go far into King Center business today, but come back and find out and be trained and be equipped. And so I'm just going to say, Ernie, we, we're still, this is all new. It, this, this hit us. You know, because um, nobody ever knows the moment. And you, you're, you're always preparing, but you're never prepared. So we're having those um, conversations. Now I can't give you an exact timetable, but know that it will be done. Um, and at that time, we'll, we'll announce it in, in terms of uh, the chair, chairperson uh, for the King Center. Um, on the King State side, you know, Martin and I left. So we will continue to move forward. It's already structurally in place. Um, as I said, Eric Tidwell is uh, a general counsel and our managing director of intellectual properties management, which is the management licensing arm of the King Estate. So that business continues, regardless of us in the background, that business will, will continue. And obviously, we'll work you know, hand in hand as we go forward the King Estate and the King Center as we go forward to realize, you know, the, the dream and vision that Dexter had as well, that he started on early on that kind of got intercepted, but we're going to put it back on course. Huh? That's it? Thank you all so much. I appreciate you. And again, I love you. And please have a safe day. And continue to keep us in your prayers. God bless you.